Thank you. My <laughs> next time I'm from Finland, from Hong Kong, and I have been a library assistant for all over 30 years. But um, today I call myself more a reading inspirer and a storyteller because my focus in my work has changed over, over the years. I used to work with the, the children and the youngsters book as an object, but now today I work more with the book as a tool, the tool for, for development and in, in, for a child in so many ways. I have been here in Estonia, this is my third time, I have been to Haapsalo two times in uh, uh, fairy tale festival and um, the first time I was told that I have only 20 minutes and I said oh dear I talk four hours for this is my favorite topic so <laughs> I must uh, make uh, uh, some kind of um, short formal for my work so it became this M plus M plus M is R and I will tell you about this formal now Okay, I told you already this. I have a, was granted a, a, the, the biggest national award, the Nuti Prize, because of my, my good results with, with working with children in the library. And this summer, um, I was <laughs> elected the most posi positive citizen in Hanko. And that was very nice because it was uh, uh, on due to my, to my work and not as if for, my, for myself. Okay, M plus M plus M is R. The first M, that is why. The other M is how. And uh, the third M, the other M is methods. And the third M is magic. So I see my work as motivation, methods and magic. And that becomes the reader. Um, motivation. Everything changes now in our society and all the technological things that children use take more of their time daily. And that means that if we want today our children to become readers, then we really need to work on it. And you don't become a reader if someone doesn't introduce you to books. That is a fact. So the changes are happening very rapidly and I think that in 20 years we can see more of what has happened with the, the children's reading in, in our society. I'm not the kind of person who wants to think back that everything was so good yesterday and 10 years ago, but I think that we must use sound judgment in what, what are the things that the the people and the, pu the, the pupils and the children really actually need and what are the things that we can leave. And uh, all these uh, technological things, they, they cost a lot. And uh, I see it like that, that for example, when I work in the library, I have all the old books and I have new great books that comes every year. So I see that if we teach uh, people in the libraries and teach teachers, uh, everybody that works with children, how to use the book more pedagogically and use new methods. It's also uh, something that doesn't cost that much and it will increase the reading and I can prove that it will. <laughs> something that is very, very important is that you have, have your own, your, that when you read something, the, the word means something special to you and you see something in your head when you read, for example, a red car. This becomes reading after when you have seen the red car in your face. This is the same thing that when you, you read a book and then someone makes a film about it, then the characters doesn't, doesn't fit at all because you have seen something else in your head. And this that we have our own pictures here, the new pictures for the children, uh, that must happen because everything new that has been created in, in life has started in, someone, in someone's brain. And now I work with uh, many, many, many groups and classes, all, all groups and classes in Hanko. And uh, something 
um, that I have noticed now that really scares me. I work very much with oral storytelling, and that is actually um, telling someone about what you see in your head. So I have noticed that um, in, in many classes, for example, many, many boys doesn't have this, these uh, inner pictures. And this is, I think, uh, either they live in such a pictorial world, they see pictures all the time, or then the language doesn't make the picture in the head. And this is, for me, very scary. Uh, but one of the motivations why I work this, and uh, why I work with, with, with books this way as I do now. And then focusing and concentration. Um, I say that uh, children before they attend school, they must have rehearsed, rehearsed concentration. You can't ask a child to, to sit for five or six hours if it, this child hasn't rehearsed focusing and listening. And that is, that is what you do when you read to a child before they go to school. And naturally, the language, this is what we think, think firstly. Empathy. When we read to a child or, or a child reads a book, uh, it will um, stimulate empathic thinking. And that is what we need more in this world today. Of course, social and psychological development also. And identity. If we are small children or when we are grown-ups, always when we read something, we, um, we measure our lives to the people's lives in the books. And by doing that, then we find out who we actually are. And this is very important. We, we find our place in the world. Moral, right and wrong. When you are a small child, you need to know what's right and what is wrong. It's then when you are grown up, we see, you see all the, the grayer shades. But, uh, and nothing, uh, uh, no book can be better to, to show moral than the old classical fairy tale. Then you, th there you really know who is the bad guy and, and who is the good. <laughs> Culture, of course. And the endless, endless, endless knowledge that you get from the book. That's the, that is the motivation. Initiative, strength, and consolation. Consolation is utterly important. You, a little child cannot um, do something if, if the child's life isn't good. But uh, when you read something, you can get consolation. If we th again think of the, the old stories, the classical stories, it's always the, the little boy with the worst horse and that, that will get the princess and the half of the, the country at the end. Many motivations. Uh, in the library, I have an inspiration and experience room. This is a room where I change settings every year. The settings mean that um, um, the child can better focus on the stories that I do. This um, room of mine, it has been, uh, for example, um, deep sea and it has been a rainforest and today and this year I work with the classical fairy tales so I have I have built a castle in there. Uh, the most important thing is continuity. Uh, the children and the, the groups I work with, uh, most groups come uh, once a month and I work with children um, three to five years, preschool children and all the classes. It means that um, I have two or three groups every day. So uh, whatever class you take in, in Hanko, they go to the library nine times a year. And they have, um, I give them another kind of program. It's not that kind of program that they come and see what, wh where the books are in the shelves. They, they get inspiration, inspiration one hour, and then they go down and borrow the books. Uh, oral storytelling is something that's very, very important for me, and I have noticed that oral storytelling uh, it, it's something that you do, it comes from your heart to, to my heart and backwards. And you can reach everybody and you can see everybody's eyes and, and you always get children listening by oral storytelling. And you can do very good book talks or story, uh, 
discuss interesting topics after an oral story. Of course, I read all kinds of children's picture, pictures books, and I use all, always uh, a flash lamp when I uh, read them. Uh, the, by using a flash lamp, by using a flash lamp, I can point out certain things. And if I have the if I have the room very dark, then uh, it. Uh, it's very interesting, but that we do tomorrow when I have a workshop, then I, I show you all the things I do. But today I only tell you about, about my methods. This is the lamp reading. I use also massage stories a lot. And we live in a culture where, where people don't touch each other very much, and I have noticed that massage stories are very good for children. When I tell them what to do, and I, I can see the children's eyes, and I see what happens, when somebody does a massage on their back. So when the children come to me, I always say that when you come to Netta's inspiration room, there must be something for the ears, something for the eyes, something for the heart, and something for the whole body. And that is the concept. And that's all the senses need to be within when we do this. Hand puppets are used sometimes, and um, uh, when you, uh, create a very, um, you create a, a feeling that, that the, the, the pupils and the children are very listening and concentrated, then they must get to do something to, to move. Uh, uh, so I, I do all kinds of post gymnastics um, so that we do clap rhythms or we sing, but they are also in the same theme, so it comes, it, it's a, a all is in, in the same theme, actually. Uh, I have also done uh, special projects for boys. When, uh, when I noticed boys for, for fifth and sixth grade read quite little in Hanko, so we did with the school a special program, uh, pro project and it increased their reading. And I also do projects that includes families. It, we, someone talked here today of, about including families, and I think that if we want to, to uh, uh, have readers, we must, it's something that we must do from the school, and we must do it from the homes, and we must do it from the library. It's the three parts that need to, to collaborate so that we, even in the future, will have readers. Uh, I have also uh, done diplomas for the school, uh, I think uh, usually when you get the diploma, it's, it's for me, I think it's kind of stupid that if the diploma is a, a row of books that you have read, because it doesn't say anything about what kind of reader you have been. So I have I created many diplomas, and what was new about this diploma was that, uh, that there also goes a diploma to the parent, be, because the parent has stimulated the child to read, and I show them later. Magic. Magic is important. Uh, if I read aloud, then I must have rehearsed it. It will never, 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 ever happen that I take a book from the shelf and start reading something that I don't know what it consists of. It must have been, uh, I must think about it. What will I read? What will I do? What kind of book talk will I do? What other things will consist of this? And the, the reading itself must be good. I have uh, had many workshops with, with um, preschool teachers and, and, and people working in daycare, and I have noticed, I have actually noticed that the allowed reading is very difficult. And I have also noticed that grown-up people are very shy in front of each other to, to read. And that is, and, and I also try always to, to encourage them, please don't be shy, because if you want the children to love books, you must really, really read them with, uh, with all the feelings that they, they need to be. The reader must choose the book very, very carefully and really, really like it so that, that it will give the best result. The presence is actually very important also, but the presence, you will, the, the presence will come to you if you love the book enough when you want to read it to a child.
And all these things are here to arouse the expectations. And then when, when we have, have the expectations aroused, then it's just to read or tell stories. So M plus M plus M to perfection. That means that we will in the future also have readers. It must be an experience worth remembering and it needs to create a, a, a need for more. This is issue. Uh, I, I don't do book talks anymore at all because in a small library we, we buy lots of books but we buy only one copy of the book. And then if I tell to some people this book, this is so interesting and, and uh, this you would like to read, then all the class wants to read this book. And then they cannot have this book at that time and that is negative uh, advertisement. So, so uh, I think that if I do a program upstairs in the library and then we go down and then I help the children to choose the book. So that is the inspiration. Uh, when, when it is really good and I have had many, 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 I, I have had many thousands of, of, of children during the years there. I have three groups a day. The children forget about the outside world. And you know, you can, you can see when a child goes into the store and forget about the outside world, the child sits down and uh, suddenly her eyes doesn't blink at all. And then she is in the story. And then happens this, this very, very crucial thing, the own personal pictures there in the head. Then the children want to have more, more reading if, if they have good experiences from them. And this, as I have understand that here are many teachers. Uh, in, in the library point of view, um, if, uh, if the program is good, then I think all, all the teachers think that it is important that they take their classes to the library. But, um, so that's why it's important for the library people to improve what, they, what kind of program they have in the library. The teachers have enough things to do in the school. They wouldn't come if it wouldn't be good, I think. And my teachers in Hang Hanko comes nine times a year, so I'm very happy about this. Um, readers. Uh, first, we have the beginner. The beginner is from something, somewhere from preschool to, to perhaps second grade. The beginner, when I think of it as, uh, for example, f uh, a child at home, the parents need to see this. The parents need to say, oh, I am so proud. You have learned to read. I must phone granny and tell her. And even if it's Thursday, we need to have a dessert today. And, and I tell daddy, immediately when he comes that you have learned to read. Is it very important that the child is seen for the reader that, that he or she has become? Um, nowadays we have many, many books for uh, uh, the beginner reader, but there it's very important to see that the, the reading uh, goes uh, forward all the, all the time. Uh, after that comes the gobbler. That's the reader that from uh, the library borrows piles of books. When I was a young woman in the library, I had lots of pupils who borrowed many, many books. Today, I must say that the, the, the book piles are read by those who read fantasy mostly. That's the way it is. Then we have the chooser. The chooser is the one that can function in, in society and and can re find the readings that, that he wants. The target groups I work with, three to five years, also come once a month, preschool children, all school classes. Um, then I have these reading projects for parents and children. There are three, three, three nights. The firstly, I have a, a, a parental night when I tell all the for all the, all the parents about the literary skills and, and what is important to think of. And then the children come with their mother or father to the library at night. And we do this, um, we, we go to this inspiration room. We have now a generation of parents also that 
hasn't been read to, and they need models, and, and they need to see how you can be with a child, and what kind of uh, things you can talk with a child, and how you do a massage story. And, and uh, uh, I must say that in Hanko, mm, when uh, two years ago I had this reading project for, for, for preschool children, um, I was to the preschool and made an advertisement of, about my work and 98% of all the preschool children in Hanko this year came uh, in this project. And uh, they were so many, so I had to do all the, the nights four times in this inspiration room, because we, we couldn't fit in the room. <laughs> uh, this year uh, I have done with the preschool classes, they have got uh, bags so that they can borrow, borrow books directly from the preschool and, and within the bag there's also um, a little a booklet where they can write comments about, about what, what they think about the, the, the books. Um, uh, yes. Here is the library in Hanko. And um, the children and the, the classes that come, they come running in here and then they take off their jackets and, and uh, then you must take down the tempo. The, the children cannot come into the, the inspirational room running, so we need to take, take the, the silence and, and get prepared for going upstairs where the, the, the room is. Here is actually a picture from the C theme. Uh, when I had this deep sea theme, the, the whole room was, was all blue. And uh, as you see, I al always build a, a three-dimensional wall. Uh, behind there you see the, 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 the fish, and then there were blue uh, um, fabrics and blue lights and the mermaid. And of course, uh, when we do, for example, the, the massage story, there are uh, voice... Uh, sound of waves, and, and I have also had um, um, a theme from the rainforest, and there were also uh, things about how you need to preserve the rainforest and, and such things. We do something tomorrow in the workshop of that. Um, and this, these are dolls. Then step toward reading inspiration. Mm. Reading is for life. It's not for the school. And this is important to, to tell also the parents that, that, they, that they actually understand their role in, their, in the process of creating readers. You all know that, that the, the child's in, interest in reading starts before the child is seven years old, and it makes all the difference how many stories the child has heard before the child uh, starts school. <clears throat> mm. The professional educators should read the best literature, pedagogically and artistically, as well as have a plan for inspiring children to read. And they should read with knowledge, sound judgment, great inspiration, and a heart that beats for the good of the children. Mm. The physical room. It's much easier, for example, in, in a preschool or, or in daycare, if you, if you can have a, a special room for this. The children... Um, mm, knows, oh, this was this room, now I need to be like this, and, and it's easy for them to get into the story. Um, yes, the experience must be a gift where all senses are activated. I have the same plan for, for all children, uh, even if they are older or if they are small children. We always uh, do the same things, but the, the, the surroundings are different. I always tell one oral story, and I read something, and uh, I do perhaps a clap rhythm, and I sing a song, and, but all, all, so that it comes, it, it's a, 
a whole thing in the same theme. And the book is, of course, very important. Parents have been very grateful when they come to the library and, and when they ask what kind of book should they borrow for they, their, their child if the child doesn't come with them. And I have told them that, that if they open a book somewhere and then they read the words there, and if, uh, if they notice that there uh, are five words that the child doesn't know, they need perhaps a, 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 a bit too difficult book for, for the, the child. And if the child knows every word, then it could be too easy. But if there are three words that the child doesn't know, then it's, it's probably the right one, because you, you understand the book and you learn new words. For me, it's very important that, um, that the child always leaves the, the inspirational room and has grown this much. I try to use stories always where this little child will, will conquer everything and, and everything will, will be good and, and goes the way the child has planned. Actually, as in the old classical fairy tale. Um, I'm a friend of uh, healing stories also. You can use them in many ways. Cooperation and fresh thinking between homes, schools and libraries. This Hanko model, it means that, that, as I told you, that I was elected the most positive person in Hanko. It means that uh, every child group or, or parental group or school or preschool knows me. And um, I, if, if, if I could arrange the world, I would think that, that every library in the future need persons that actually can open the books for the children. Because the books in the shelves are too quiet. And I don't think that the books and the children find each other if, does, if you haven't got anyone that opens them for them. So we, we, used, we should have drama pedagogues and people doing uh, perhaps projects like me. Uh, I think actually in, in every library there would be one person that w will work only with these things. If I could, if I could decide, <laughs> then it would be like that. <laughs> And this was my presentation about my work and what I do. And tomorrow, tomorrow I have a workshop and then I will tell you the stories and I will read and we will sing and do clap rhythms and, and everything. Thank you so much. <laughs>